Welcome back to another lesson in which we endeavor to find as many digits of pi as we can. This is a tribute to Archimedes, the ancient Greek mathematician, and quite possibly the greatest mind of antiquity. To understand how Archimedes approached this problem, we must start with the definition of pi. From geometry, pi is defined as the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. This can be seen in the picture on the screen. From an empirical perspective, you could take measurements to estimate pi. Find a cylindrical object such as a can, wrap a length of string all the way around it, measure the length of the string and the can's diameter, divide the two and you should have a reasonable estimate for pi. Of course, this method has its shortcomings and I doubt you could get more than a couple digits of accuracy, even if you were very careful in your technique. For most practical purposes, two digits may be entirely adequate. However, good luck extracting 10, 100, 1000, or any more digits from this approach. Back to Archimedes now. How did he do it? Well, he made the observation that a polygon inscribed within a circle has a perimeter less than a circle's circumference. This is the red hexagon. Similarly, it is visually intuitive that a polygon circumscribed around the outside of a circle has a perimeter greater than a circle's circumference. This is the green hexagon. Geometry can help us find the inner perimeter and outer perimeter. Let us begin with the inner perimeter of the red hexagon, as seen here. We can divide a hexagon into six equilateral triangles, as seen by the blue lines. For visual clarity, let's focus on just one of those triangles. If we split that in half, we have a right triangle. The definition of sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We can use some basic trigonometry to find the height of that red segment, which is one half, or 0.5 in decimal notation. Note that we are using a unit circle, so the length of the blue hypotenuse is equal to one. Since we have six sides on a hexagon, the total perimeter is 12 times that value h we just found. 12 times 0.5 is equal to six exactly. We have just found the inner perimeter, so how do we convert this to pi? We have to divide by the diameter. The radius of a unit circle is equal to one, so the diameter is twice that. Six divided by two is equal to three exactly. The actual value of pi is greater than three. We have just established a lower bound for our estimate. Now let's tackle the upper bound. That is going to be done by finding the outer perimeter of this green hexagon, which circumscribes the circle. This hexagon can also be divided into six equilateral triangles. They're just slightly bigger than the ones we saw before. For visual clarity, we will once again focus on just one of those triangles. Splitting it in half, we have another right triangle. This time we need to use tangent, which is defined as opposite over adjacent. The adjacent side, seen in blue, corresponds to the radius of the unit circle, equal to one. Trigonometry tells us the height h of that green segment is equal to one over the square root of three. In just a moment, I will provide a more thorough explanation on where the value tangent of 30 degrees came from. The hexagon has six sides, so the total perimeter is 12 times h. This comes out to be approximately 6.928, as seen in green. To find pi, we divide by the diameter, which is the same as last time, two. So it is that our upper bound is approximately equal to 3.464. That makes sense because this value should be greater than the actual value of pi, about 3.14. Now back to geometry. Where do those trig values come from? The equilateral triangle. Each side length is two units long and each of the three angles is 60 degrees. Cut this in half. Now we have 30, 60, and 90 degree angles, a right triangle. Half of two is one. Use the Pythagorean theorem to find the height is equal to the square root of three. 
Now just apply the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. These are very useful values to know, so I'd recommend taking a minute to digest this. Don't focus so much on memorizing the exact values shown here. It is better to remember this. Draw an equilateral triangle and apply the same reasoning we just did to derive these results. Before we conclude, let's revisit these values. The red is our inner perimeter, the lower bound, and the green is the outer perimeter, the upper bound. Knowing that pi is approximately 3.14, it makes sense that it falls between these two bounds. If we average the values, our estimate for pi is approximately 3.23. That's not quite what we're going for, but it's a good start. Do you have any ideas how we could make our estimate of pi even better? To give you a hint, you can research what Archimedes did thousands of years ago. Or you could wait for the next lesson, in which we will hash out the details. I hope you'll stick around for that. Thanks for watching.